Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon. Thank you for making time today. Good afternoon. Well, the U.S. Commerce Department, as we just heard, is saying the American economy last year likely saw its strongest growth in 37 years. There was a recovery in consumer spending and growth in the fourth quarter picked up to an annualized 5.5 percent. Growth this year, though, is uh, likely uh, going to be slower. What do you see happening with growth in the United States? Yes, if you look at the U.S. economy, it expanded much faster than expected. Uh, just look at the fourth quarter, it grew by 6.9% annualized, much higher than 2.3% in the third quarter, and well above forecast of 5.5%. Uh, if you look at for the, as a whole year of 2021, the economy advanced by 5.7%. Uh, this is the most since 1984. Uh, if you look at the numbers, uh, it seems to be uh, good in all around numbers. Uh, if you look at the personal consumption increase, uh, it was 3.3 percent, uh, pushed higher by 4.7 percent surge in service spending, namely health care and recreation and transportation. And also the fixed income, uh, fixed investment uh, rebounded by 1.3 percent, led by the intellectual property products. Uh, and also, if you look at the um, overall motor vehicles and the private inventory side, uh, it grew by uh, private inventory was up about 4.9 percent. So all these numbers are looking uh, particularly good. Uh, I guess the only concern is that uh, growth rate for this year uh, should be uh, going down uh, quite a, a bit. Uh, the concern is in regards to what's happening to the inflation. Uh, inflation number that we're seeing right now is at 7%, uh, which is a record high level that we've seen in a very long period of time. Uh, so therefore, it might eat up to the actual real growth rate of U.S. Right now, Fed is uh, expecting 4% growth rate, uh, falling from 5.7% last year. Um, but uh, if the inflation numbers come in at too strongly, that growth number could be lower than expected of 4%. Well, meanwhile, stocks on Wall Street overnight closed lower, especially tech, uh, but the Dow is just about flat. The market had started out higher. Uh, Tesla shares in particular down 11%, uh, while Intel was down 7%. What's the story in the global equity markets? Right. I think everybody still continues to be... Uh, uncertain about what's happening to the monetary policy side. As the Jerome Powell talked about how uh, not raising interest rate right now, but we expect to raise interest rate in March, uh, he didn't mention how much. Uh, people are concerned that it might be more than 0.25%, maybe 0.5%. And also people are concerned about the possibility of the uh, over asset purchases actually uh, going to the other way around, where the balance sheet can be uh, reduced in the future. If that's the case, then that is a significant reduction of liquidity uh, in the system. So uh, people are concerned about what the monetary policy would have implication on growth rate of U.S., and therefore we saw overall uh, prices falling for the U.S. market yesterday. However, right now the futures market is showing somewhat of a recovery. Um, main reason for that is because um, if you look at the Apple's number, it's coming in at quite strong. Uh, particularly the sales growth rate is coming at 11 percent, which indicates that the overall economic growth rate is expected to be quite reasonably good and that um, the concern about the slowing down of the economy may be too over highly emphasized at this point in time. So we'll be watching carefully what's happening to the economic growth rate and also what might be the case for the interest rate hike. Uh, if we look at both sides of that and see that the earnings for the uh, U.S. company continue, continues to remain very strong, then the market will be in good position to recover. Uh, right now, people are still much more focused on the macro numbers, so therefore we need to probably wait until the March 16 FOMC meeting uh, for the market to start to recover strongly. Uh, for meanwhile, we think that the volatility in the market should continue in the future. 
Well, Korean stocks today uh, did have a nice bounce back, though we are still way below where we started this year. Uh, at one point this morning, the Kospi was below 2,600 points, but recovered strongly. Shares of Samsung and LG Electronics were up after they posted record sales for last year, but uh, LG Energy Solution, which went public yesterday, came down more than 10 percent. Tell us about the domestic market. Yes, if you look at the Kospi, it's up about 1.8. 7%, the Kostak is up 2.78%. Uh, uh, that's quite nice recovery. Um, uh, despite the foreigners are net selling over 600 billion won worth of equities, uh, close to 700 billion won worth of equities, while the retail investors are buying 270 and institutions are buying about uh, 390 billion. Um, these numbers are looking good for today, but if you look at just the last several days, Korea's uh, benchmark cost it's been the worst performer this year. Uh, and people might be saying even we enter the bear market territories, uh, the sell-off continues to be intensifying from the foreign investors as the Fed Reserve signaling the interest rate uh, liftoff or hike in March. Now, uh, the day before uh, yesterday, if you look at the uh, cost index, uh, it plunged by 3.5%. Uh, particularly the retail investors have been the major support of the uh, market, but they are quite panicking right now uh, because the foreign investors continue to be dumping and also using futures and options to sell the market. Uh, and obviously uncertainty regarding the IPO, uh, which you mentioned, the LGM solution, uh, it raised 12.75 trillion won worth of money uh, through the IPOs. Uh, but people are concerned about the corporate governance issues and how this disturbed the liquidity condition of the market uh, and spinning off LG Chemical to this company. Uh, people are saying that this was not a good uh, way of doing it uh, or for the for the existing shareholder of LG Chemical. So a lot of people are uncertain about the long-term future of Korean equity market. Uh, Korea continues to be at big discount. To relative to any other economies in terms of the valuations. Korea right now trading at below 10 times P multiple, uh, below one time a book. Uh, return equity is one of the lower numbers at 9%, slightly above 9%. Uh, so I think that there's a reason for why we are trading at huge discount. So people are still continue to be concerned about this corporate governance issue in a longer term basis. Well, finally, Mr. Yu, a major issue in Korea, the overheated housing market. For this week, we saw apartment prices in Seoul actually come down for the first time since the summer of 2020. Uh, the decline was bigger for apartments north of the Han River, a sort of dividing line in the market. Government officials have been saying this would happen for a number of reasons, including their own policies. Well, what's behind the decline and what's your outlook? Right. I mean, housing prices all depends on what's the supply and demand. Uh, the, uh, under the third generation Newtown Development Project uh, and um, the 3080 plus plan, uh, the overall housing supply of 320,000 uh, units in Seoul and 830,000 units in the region uh, outside of Seoul by 2050, uh, I guess people are trying to realize the level of the uh, supply and demand picture is moving uh, in favor of price declining rather than going up. So all in all, um, the government is continuing to be focusing on trying to uh, curve this market where we saw a significant rise and the level of the rise has been one of the highest in the world uh, in terms of the uh, housing market. Uh, so uh, the, even the BOK have been raising interest rates already third time that they raised it. Uh, a lot of these measures are focused on trying to uh, limit the housing price rise. So we do think that the supply and demand picture as well as the monetary policy is going to have implications for the housing prices to stabilize in the future. Uh, some people are saying that uh, the supply is not going to come in anytime soon, therefore prices could go up. However, though, 
uh, looking at the birth ratios, the population uh, mixtures, and the supply and demand pictures, all that indicates that uh, housing prices should be too high on a relatively, uh, relative basis compared to anywhere else in the world. Korea seems to be highest in terms of the price uh, on the yield on rent uh, or yield on the price. Uh, overall price to income ratios, all that indicates that Korea is expensive in terms of the property prices. So uh, as long as the measures are focused on trying to control this, uh, we think that the price stabilization could happen in the future. Uh, but in the short-term speculation, uh, people are still uncertain because supply is not coming in anytime soon. We'll have to keep our eye on policy uh, here in the new year. Uh, Mr. Yu, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thank you for making time for us on this Friday ahead of a holiday. We hope you have a safe and happy Lunar New Year. Thank you very much. Happy Lunar New Year.